thank you so much for the entire time today. I really appreciate it. Um, and it's great to reconnect. Um, and what I was hoping to do was I'm doing a piece on um, uh, protecting your crypto and Adam spotted me. I was doing a call out for uh, uh, quotes and Adam uh, very kindly approached me. And I said, of course, I'd love to chat with you. Um, so basically what I want to find out from you, because now it's in my circle of friends, I'm no longer the odd lady that likes crypto. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's getting to be a bit more um, uh, usual. But how can how can we protect people? So it's, it's, I want to use you just as a as a pace setter, if you don't mind. Um, how can we protect our crypto? What advice do you give to both to retailers? And then also, do you have any uh, observations on institutions? Yeah. So there are. It's not like there's one answer because not everybody is in the same place mm -hmm. in terms of their, call it, journey of, of learning. You know, typically, if you're someone new and you've never been an active participant in the crypto ecosystem, I would generally, you know, as an American, I would refer to you to something like Coinbase to buy your first $20 or $50 or $100 worth of crypto, which is not really an investment in crypto so much as an investment in yourself, mm -hmm. in your own learning. And so in the beginning, it's not about protecting your crypto, but it's your own learning. The moment that you have what I'd say is a material investment, and that is different, it's relative to everyone individually. The moment you have something material, meaning mm -hmm. it's more than a cup of coffee, you know, something that is now falling into uh, a category of an investment in your future, which doesn't need to be significant. You know, that could be 1% or 2% of your asset allocation. You know, then it's important that you start to understand really the basics. And the principle is very simple. Not your coins, not your keys. Not your keys, not your coins. The, the idea is it's public-private key cryptography. And if you don't have the password to your account, which is your private key, and it's not held in a private system, you are potentially at risk of the failing of an exchange or you know any of these, these platforms. But then again, that's not necessarily the answer always either. You know, sometimes people are looking to participate in, call it yield farming, or what has emerged as decentralized finance. Now, if you want to partake in those markets, then you have to take on the counterparty risk associated with those platforms. And the way that you often mitigate those risks is through diversification, not having all of your eggs in one basket, you know, making sure that you've spread your yield farming activities across a series of accounts so that if any one of those things were to fail, uh, it doesn't wreck your entire portfolio. You also have trading concepts like stop losses. If a market drops by 10% or more, you dump. You know, you just take your licks, you take your hit, and you try to recover it, you know, in the next bull or the next, you know, series of uh, market-based investments you may make. Now, if you're an institution, again, the rules are somewhat different institutions often have to be mitigating risks by having uh, custodial agents, you know, third party custodial agents, which like Fidelity, some of the largest financial institutions in the world are now offering that as well. So the long and short of all of this is there is not a simple answer. It really depends on where you are in your journey of learning. Um, but uh, in general, I mean, the, the most important thing you can do for yourself going forward is invest in yourself, in your own education, you know, taking the time to learn these things. And step one, you know, is first understand how it works. You know, step two is basic security. You know, step three is venturing out beyond that. And it's always better to walk before you run, you know, work in baby steps. Don't um, let FOMO or the fear of missing out cloud your judgment and cause you to make missteps. You're better off being safe, then sorry, this is a marathon. This is a long game. Take your time. Be informed. Okay, I do like the uh, your concept as an invest in yourself, which is true because when you first come to this space, it is terrifying and it is uh, quite worrying. So, but I think that's possibly why something like Celsius did so well because people could it was a click and click and play type stuff. You know, it looked very easy, and as we know, obviously that what went behind the scenes was not good. But um, so. We're, you're talking then about uh, retail traders coming on, investing in yourselves, baby steps, a walk before you can run. So in terms of like the, the 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 downward volatility, I think for people who are who are new to crypto, 
that volatility may surprise them. I mean, like you don't often get crashes every day in the stock market and, and this can be quite frequent in crypto. Like, do you do you ever use or advocate the use of things like options? Yes, though I, I want to be careful in, you know, encouraging people to play with options. Mm -hmm. Generally, leverage is the demise of most people's wealth. <laughs> um, meaning be very careful playing with leverage. You know, it is, you know, generally the thing that will create many of your problems. Now, leverage as a tool for hedging, mm -hmm. generally good. Leverage as a tool to try and achieve greater returns, usually bad. There are exceptions to all of these rules. And another thing that we didn't talk about, clearly, if you, you know, have thousands of dollars uh, invested in this space, you also want to learn about hardware wallets and, you know, and some of these things. Um, but even so there's a bunch of stuff to learn here. Mm -hmm. But generally, I would encourage people to to steer clear of leverage unless it's really there as a tool for options. Okay. And, and options as a tool for hedging, that is. Yes, yes. And then actually just think so you mentioned cold storage. Um recently there was that story about the ledger but with the extra software and there was like the, where there were hacks taking place. Is there any any cold storage that is is um safe? I don't know. Is there? <laughs> how do you choose? Well, back 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 when I started, we used what were called paper wallets. You mm. would you'd, you'd have a new device, you'd print it out, you'd laminate it, throw it in a safe yeah. <laughs> because there's no <laughs> such thing as 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 cold storage hardware wallets. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure that there were hacks related to, to, uh, well, think... uh, to Ledger, but what we found out is that they had a backdoor. Yes. And, yes. And that came, I think, quite a bit as a surprise to many of us. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh, no, don't worry about it. It was no big deal. Only under these really extreme circumstances would that have ever been an issue. Yes. I, what, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> back to like, a word. Back to yeah. the, I don't recall that having been disclosed. Yes. Yes. Uh, and we talk about this sector as being a trustless industry. Mm. I disagree with that. Mm. We're trying to reduce the need for trust right, in terms of trusted counterparties mm -hmm. and trusted intermediaries. But I would say that trust is still extremely important here, and especially in our leaders. We have, you know, whether it be going back to Mt. Gox up to your more recent Terra Lunas, uh, FTXs, Celsius, BlockFi, list goes on, Ledger in terms of not disclosing, you know, potentially these back doors. More and more, I'm looking at who are the principals, you know, mm -hmm. who are the key people behind the project and how trustworthy are they? You know, that's a very good point. That, that may not be necessary 10 years from now, once a system mm -hmm. or an ecosystem is so advanced and evolved that it's moved into, you know, really call it a form of, of decentralized governance. But in the early phases of these things, there is a tremendous amount of trust we're putting in the leadership, you know, the people behind these projects, the people backing these projects. Yes. And so I, I fundamentally, I think, disagree with the idea of trustlessness. I'm seeking trust in this sector more than ever right now. Okay, that's another. That's a very good point, actually. Thank you for that. Okay, so finally, then, let's say it's just, it's just. I, I want to use you as a, as a, my opening uh, piece for this article. So, um, in terms of, like, you know, you mentioned cold storage, uh, hodling, you know, and, and all, all the, the the safety things you said at the very beginning. Do you think as we approach next year and the halvening, do you think that that we're going to get on the the good old. Uh, uh, bull markets again do you, do you see that happening or, or or are you more conservative i'm not asking you to to, to name the figure or whatever but well, i mean the pattern if, if if we continue in this pattern the answer is yes we're, we're likely to see some type of bull or bullish mm -hmm. um, market though i'm not sure these patterns are going to continually repeat themselves the markets have become more and more institutional mm -hmm. with great greater institutional adoption um as well as algorithmic sort of trading. Um, you know, these things should be predicted. They should be priced in and built into the market prior to the happening. Uh, uh, that's a question, I think, beyond even my pay grade. Um, okay. You know, and 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 one of those things, again, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not an active trader. Like, mm. I'm not a person that's in the market betting on up, down, up, down, up, down. You know, I'm, I'm more of a long uh, uh, participant in the market. Mm -hmm. I, I form long-term views and then I, I weighed out the, call it the market volatility and, and market volatility is not a negative thing. 
you know, uh, tremendous wealth is made in volatile markets. Um, the more movement, the more opportunity, you know, potentially there is, but it's not for the faint of heart. No. Um, you know, you're riding a roller coaster ride um, uh, uh, almost every day. <laughs> so actually, what are, are you active in at the moment, Fabian? Well, so my, my background is more early stage, right? Yeah. I, I've historically been on the uh, creation side of things, mm -hmm. inventing innovations, assembling teams or supporting teams, uh, advising teams, investing in teams. And uh, and I'm more of a hodler than mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day sort of active trader. Actually, you, you brought up options. And the few times that I've tried to um, swing for the fences with, uh, uh, call it leveraged uh, uh, option bets, it's not worked out well for me because one of my problems is I'm so close to the market that the markets are not as rational. You know, I mean, take a look at what happened with Ripple, right? And mm -hmm. and this SEC event. I thought, I fortunately didn't make the trade this time, but my first reaction within minutes of that happening is this may trigger an alt bull market, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I think it was a pretty positive thing, but we have not seen the markets respond that way. So- yeah. Uh, it did not do what I would have, uh, my immediate assumption and reaction. It did temporarily. We saw for yeah. one night, uh, everything kind of respond very positively, but uh, it was very short-lived. Mm -hmm. Meaning if you had bought in that first night or even the following morning, uh, you you would have been wrecked had you thought uh, that this was the It was beginning. going all the way. I, I, I invested the princely sum of $100 into it. <laughs> <laughs> that was about the extent of my risk. That's good. But are you working on, on any projects now that you can talk about? Yeah, lots. I mean, I'm I'm always very active. I mean, one of the projects, uh, Self, uh, with Craig Sellers and Phil Potter, two of my co-founders in Tether, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the CTO and uh, uh, Chief Strategic Officer in Tether. Yeah. Uh, we started that. It's a project called Self, Foundational Self-Sovereign Identity. How do mm -hmm. we build a future where you own your identity and all of the permissions associated with that? How does the att attestation work? You know, who are you? Um, and you're not and going for uh, eyeballs. Uh, it's it's a little different than what you'd see with uh, with WorldCoin. Um, yeah. uh, I it, it's too early for me to to want to opine on this, but uh, you know, I think that um, you know the decisions we make right now. I guess the main thing I, I I'd encourage everyone to think about is. Every time we transact, we are giving power to something. Mm -hmm. What kind of future do you want to live in? The future is going to happen to you or with you. And so be mindful of what you empower, because what you empower, what you interact with, what you transact with, you know, uh, you know, is adding to what is the potential future we're all going to live in. Let's make sure to build one, you know, in the mm -hmm. way that we wish to live, right? Let's co-create that future world uh, that we all want to uh, uh, be a part of and one where we can hopefully all uh, do well. Perfect. Wise words. Thank you so much indeed. It's great to meet you again. Thank you for, I, I like the, the the pace of what you said today and I'll, I'll be using it in my article. Thank you very much indeed. And I hope we chat again soon. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bro. Thank you. <laughs>